welcome dear students once again and here we are going to learn today the new topic as you can see here now on your screen can anyone tell what is it have you listened to the story the screen is not visible is it now visible yes very good yes, sir so have you listened to it and also read the text that was shared with you the link many of you might have listened and also read the text you know the title is the beggar and it is the last text from our supplementary reader moments so today uh, would you like to read it or just to discuss question and answers or you would like to watch a video based on it what do you say what's your opinion to your students what would you like to do just to read the text or watch a video or just me to share a summary say something video am i audible to your students yes prasan says watching video okay good i am playing you know this is a simple story where we can see that a beggar lost hope to change his way way and he finally become a common person from the beggar and how it happened who contributed that's the interesting story that we can see anybody wants to share something about it if you have read and listen to the text first we will watch the video uh, showing here as the summary okay so do watch it interestingly the beggar by anton chekhov kind sir have pity turn your attention to a poor hungry man for 3 days i have had nothing to eat i haven't 5 kopecks for a lodging i swear it before god turn check off kind sir have pity turn your attention the beggar by anton chekhov kind sir have pity turn your attention to a poor hungry man for 3 days i have had nothing to eat i haven't 5 kopecks for a lodging i swear it before god for 8 years i was a village school teacher and then i lost my place through intrigues i fell a victim to calumny It is a year now since I have had anything to do. The advocate Sergey looked at the ragged, fawn-colored overcoat of the suppliant, at his dull, drunken eyes, at the red spot on either cheek, and it seemed to him as if he had seen this man somewhere before. I have now had an offer of a position. in the province of kaluga the mendicant went on but i haven't the money to get there help me kindly i'm ashamed to ask but i'm obliged to by circumstances sergey's eyes fell on the man's overshoes one of which was high and the other low and he suddenly remembered something look here It seems to me I met you the day before yesterday in Sadovya street he said but you told me then that you were a student who had been expelled and not a village school teacher do you remember no that can't be so mumbled the beggar taken aback i am a village school teacher and if you like i can show you my papers I've done with lying. You called yourself a student 
and even told me what you had been expelled for. Don't you remember? Sergei flushed and turned from the ragged creature with an expression of disgust. This is dishonesty, my dear sir, he cried angrily. This is swindling. I shall send the little. I shall send the police for you, damn you. Sir, he said, laying his hand on his heart. The fact is, I was lying. I'm neither a student nor a school teacher. All that was fiction. Formerly, I sang in a Russian choir and I was sent away for drunkenness. But what else can I do? I can't get along without lying. No one will give me anything when I tell the truth. What can I do? What can you do? You ask me what you can do? cried Sergei, coming close to him. Work! That's what you can do. You must work. Work? Yes. I know that myself. But where can I find work? How would you like to chop wood for me? I wouldn't refuse to do that. But in these days, even skilled woodcutters find themselves sitting without bread. Will you come and chop wood for me? Yes, sir. I will. Very well. We'll soon find out. Sergei hastened along, rubbing his hands. He called his cook out of the kitchen. Here, Olga, he said. Take this gentleman into the woodshed and let him chop wood. The scarecrow of a beggar shrugged his shoulders, as if in perplexity, and went irresolutely after the cook. It was obvious from his gait that he had not consented to go and chop wood because he was hungry and wanted work, but simply from pride and shame and because he had been trapped by his own words. It was obvious, too, that his strength had been undermined by vodka and that he was unhealthy and did not feel the slightest inclination for toil. Sergei hurried into the dining room. From its windows, one could see the woodshed and everything that went on in the yard. Standing at the window, Sergei saw the cook and the beggar come out into the yard by the back door and make their way across the dirty snow to the shed. Olga glared wrathfully at her companion, shoved him aside with her elbow, unlocked the shed and angrily banged the door. Next, he saw the pseudo-teacher seat himself on a log and become lost in thought with his red cheeks resting on his fists. The woman flung down an axe at his feet, spat angrily, and judging from the expression of her lips, began to scold him. The beggar irresolutely pulled a billet of wood towards him, set it up between his feet, and tapped it feebly with the axe. The billet wavered and fell down. The beggar again pulled it to him, blew on his freezing hands and tapped it with his axe cautiously, as if afraid of hitting his overshoe or of cutting off his finger. The stick of wood again fell to the ground. Sergei's anger had vanished and he now began to feel a little sorry, unashamed of himself for having set a spoiled, drunken, perhaps sick man to work at menial labor in the cold. An hour later, Olga came in and announced that the wood had all been chopped. Good. Give him half a ruble, said Sergei. If he wants to, he can come back and cut wood on the first day of each month. We can always find work for him. On the first of the month, the waif made his appearance and again earned half a ruble, although he could barely stand on his legs. 
From that day on, he often appeared in the yard, and every time work was found for him. Now he would shovel snow, now put the woodshed in order, now beat the dust out of rugs and mattresses. Every time he received from 20 to 40 kopecks, and once even a pair of old trousers were sent out to him. When Sergei moved into another house, he hired him to help in the packing and hauling of the furniture. This time the waif was sober, gloomy and silent. He hardly touched the furniture and walked behind the wagons hanging his head, not even making a pretense of appearing busy. He only shivered in the cold and became embarrassed when the carters jeered at him for his idleness, his feebleness and his tattered fancy overcoat. After the moving was over, Sergei sent for him. Well, I'm happy that my words have taken effect, he said, handing him a ruble. Here's for your pains. I see you are sober and have no objection to work. What is your name? Lashkov. Well, Lashkov, I can now offer you some other cleaner employment. Can you write? I can. Then take this letter to a friend of mine tomorrow and you will be given some copying to do. Work hard, don't drink and remember what I have said to you. Goodbye. Pleased at having put a man on the right path, Sergei tapped Lushkov kindly on the shoulder and even gave him his hand at parting. Lushkov took the letter and from that day forth came no more to the yard for work. Two years went by. Then one evening, as Sergei was standing at the ticket window of a theatre paying for his seat, he noticed a little man beside him with a coat collar of curly fur and a worn seal skin cap. This little individual timidly asked the ticket seller for a seat in the gallery and paid for it in copper coins. Ashkov, is that you? cried Sergei, recognizing in the little man his former woodchopper. How are you? What are you doing? How is everything with you? All right, I am a notary now and am paid 35 rubles a month. Thank heaven, that's fine. I'm delighted for your sake. I'm very, very glad, Lashkov. You see, you're my godson in a sense. I gave you a push along the right path, you know? Do you remember what a roasting I gave you, huh? I nearly had you sinking into the ground at my feet that day. Thank you, old man, for not forgetting my words. Thank you too, said Lashkov. If I hadn't come to you, then I might still have been calling myself a teacher or a student to this day. Yes, by flying to your protection, I dragged myself out of a pit. I am very glad indeed. Thank you for your kind words and deeds. I'm very grateful to you and to your cook. God bless that good and noble woman. You spoke finely then, and I shall be indebted to you to my dying day. But strictly speaking, it was your cook, Olga, who saved me. How is that? When I used to come to your house to chop wood, she used to begin, 
Oh, you such you. Oh, you miserable creature. There's nothing for you but ruin. And then she would sit down opposite me and grow sad. Look into my face and weep. Oh, you unlucky man. There is no pleasure for you in this world. And there will be none in the world to come. You drunkard. You will burn in hell. Oh, you unhappy one. And so she would carry on, you know, in that strain. I can't tell you how much misery she suffered. How many tears she shed for my sake. But the chief thing was, she used to chop the wood for me. Do you know, sir, that I did not chop one single stick of wood for you? She did it all. Why this saved me? Why I changed? Why I stopped drinking at the sight of her? I cannot explain. I only know that owing to her words and noble deeds, a change took place in my heart. She set me right, and I shall never forget it. However, it is time to go now. There goes the bell. Beshkov bowed and departed to the cabin. Like this story, dear students. Enjoy. Understood? Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. So hard touching story, na, dear students. At the end, we come to know, right? Firstly, we feel that he was the one only, you know, Sagi, who changed her, uh, changed the beggar. But in fact, who was there? Both of them have played major roles. You know, at one side he has been very kind with him, and at another side she had been very, you know, strict and hard spoken to him so that he could change a drunken beggar to a good person. Right? So, what lesson, do you, uh, dear students, do you learn from this? Can you please share one by one? No? Okay, what are the main three characters in this story, dear students? Sergi, Lashkov, and what is the name of that Beg woman? Beggar. Olga. Right, dear guys. So, Olga is a cook. This Lashkov is a beggar, and Sergi is an advocate. Right? Am I right, dear students? Are you understanding? Yes, sir. Getting the well? Very good. Yes, sir. And you know how a beggar who was just lying a day and another day, some of the other way, saying different names, you know, was trying to earn money and live. And what was he earning for? Just to drink wine. And such a drunken person he was. And he came out of that drunkenness. How? Just this man, Sergi, who caught him red handed, that he was saying different, different every day and was trying to make money asking for that he is in really need even if he was but the money he was getting was spent in a wrong way and he did not want to work at all and he was called back to the service house home to chop the wood he never chopped but Sagi thought that it was he to chop the wood, but rather it was the cook, you know, who was chopping the wood for him, and then he was getting half of a rupee first, and that way he could earn money. But the way that lady, a woman, Olga, the cook, was strictly talking to him and making him realize that how wrong he was, that made a difference, and later he became a good person. You know, at the end, you remember and you can see again uh, that they both came at the theater and at the entrance while he was buying the ticket for him, gallery, paying some, you know, copper coins. Sadi recognized 
this lush cop and ask him about the story. Firstly, he's very thankful to Sergi, but later he told the truth that it was Olga who changed him, right? So here Vaishnavi says, sir, but why she used to chop wood for him? Then if she had not chopped uh, you know, wood for him, he could not earn money. And neither she could get enough time to talk to him and make him realize his own fault, right? Sometimes, dear students, it is always better that we should cooperate the person. You know, I would again repeat that the people are not bad, but you know, their habits and their qualities are bad. So we should never hate the people, but those bad things in them. And definitely it's up to you how you contribute that those bad qualities will be vanished and will go away forever out of those people. So this is one thing that we can learn. Anybody wants to share something that you have learned from this story? Hello. Say something, dear students. Don't just be quiet, muting yourself. Unmute and say something. Pratham. Yash. Arya, Aryan, Tak, Gayatri, Ganshan, Kushal, Nishan, Palak, Pyush, Madhura, Rajnandini, Saikali, Shadur, Shreya, Sonali. No, this is. Sonali, who is this? Okay. Surti, Vaishnavi, Varun. Shreya, Shreya, Sonali, I know. Okay, good. So say something, or no doubt, no query, just understood it in a better way. Say something, either you have understood, no, not understood. Hello? Hey dear students. Okay, very good. So in an animation form, I am now going to play one more story. You know the same, that you just watch again, it will help you revise this in a better way. Want to watch? And then we will discuss the question answers for more and better understanding. Right? May I dear students? Hello? Yes, sir. Yes, now sir. Means, are you not happy with me? For I am conducting extra lectures, and so you are not speaking. Is it so? Hello? Yes, because you are the ones, you know, who had always been talking and talking to you all the time and responding. But nowadays I find that you are being very much quiet, saying nothing. Anyway, you please share. Here it is now. Watch it carefully. Matt play dear students. Hello. Am I audible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay, good, good. I'm now going to mute myself and also turning off video so that you can watch the video clearly well and 
and also you can listen to it carefully. Story by Anton Chekhov. Let's see the story. Kind sir, have pity. Turn your attention to a poor hungry man. I have nothing to eat. I have not five kopecks for lodging, I swear before God. For eight years, I was a village school teacher, but then I lost my place through intrigues. I fell victim to calumny. It is a year now, since I have had anything to do. The advocate, Sir Gay, looked at the ragged, fun-colored overcoat of the suppliant, at his dull, drunken eyes, at the red spot on either cheek, and it seemed to him as if he had seen this man somewhere before. I have now had an offer of a position in the province of Kluga, but I haven't the money to get there. Help me kindly. I am ashamed to ask, but... I am obliged to buy circumstances. Look here, it seems to me I met you the day before yesterday in Sadova Street, but you told me then that you were a student who had been expelled, and not a village school teacher. Do you remember? No no, that can't be so. I am a village school teacher, and if you like I can show you my papers. Have done with your line? You called yourself a student, and he even told me what you had been expelled for. Don't you remember? This is dishonesty, my dear sir. This is swindling. I shall send the police for you. Damn you, sir. The fact is that I am neither a student, nor a school teacher. All that was fiction. Formerly I sang in the Russian choir and was sent away for drunkenness. But what else can I do? I can't get along without lying. No one will give me anything when I tell the truth. What can I do? What can you do? You ask what can you do? You can work. You must work. Work? Yes, I know myself. But where can I find work? How would you like to chop wood for me? Yes. Very well. Very well. We will soon find out. Then Sergi brought the beggar to home. Here Olga, take this beggar to cook. The beggar was not consented to go and chop wood because he was hungry and wanted work. But he had to agree because he was trapped by his own words. When both went, Sergi ran to dining room at the window, from where one could see everything happening in the yard. He saw, Olga and the beggar went in the yard. Olga glared at him, took him inside and banged the door. Next, he saw the beggar sat on the log and become lost in thought with his red cheeks resting on his fists. Then the woman threw an axe aside his feet and scolding him to chop wood. The beggar took the axe, but when he wanted to cut logs, he could just touch them softly, as he was afraid of cutting his finger. Then, Sergei's anger vanished. Now he felt ashamed for having set a spoiled, drunken man to work at menial labor in the cold. An hour later, Olga came and announced that the wood had been chopped. Okay, give him half a ruble. If he wants to, he can come back, and cut wood for the first day of each month. We can always find work for him. On the first of the month, he made his appearance, and again earned half a ruble, although he could barely stand on his legs. From that day, he often appeared in the yard and every time work was found for him. Now, he would shovel now, put the wood shed in order, now beat the dust out of rugs and mattresses. Every time he received 20 to 40 kopecks, and once even a pair of old trousers were sent to him. When Sergi moved to new house, 
He hired him to help in packing and hauling of the furniture. This time he was sober, gloomy and silent. He hardly touched any furniture and walked behind the wagons hanging his head, not even looking like busy. After the moving was over. Well, I am happy my words have taken effect. Here's for your pains. I see you are and have no objection to work. What's your name? Lushkov. Lushkov. I can offer you some other, cleaner employment. Can you write? I can. Then take this letter to my friend tomorrow, and you will be given some copying to do. Work hard. Don't drink, and remember what I have said to you. Goodbye. Lushkov took the letter. After that, he never came. Two years went by. Then one evening, as Sergei was standing at a ticket window of a theater paying his seat. Is there in any seat in the gallery? The little individual paid for it in copper coins. Lushkov, is that you? How are you? What are you doing? How is everything going? All right. I am a notary now and am paid 35 rubles a month. Thank heaven. That's fine. I am delighted for your sake. I am very, very glad Lushkov. You see, you are my godson, in a sense. I gave a push along the right path, you know. Do you remember what a roasting I gave you? You had been at my feet, asking for mercy. Thank you, old man, for not forgetting my words. Thank you, too. If I had hadn't come to you, then might I might still have been calling myself as a teacher or a student to this day. Yes. By flying to your protection I dragged myself out of a pit. I, I am very glad indeed. Thank you for your kind words. I am very grateful to you and your cook. God bless that good and noble woman. You spoke finally then. I shall be indebted to you, but, strictly speaking, it was your cook Olga, who saved me. How's that? When I would visit the place to chop wood, Olga would scold me. She would feel sad of me and cried. She felt very sad of me, and chopped all the wood for me. Her behavior changed me. However, it's time to go now, there goes the bell. Very good story. Wanna get more videos? Please subscribe to my channel. Hello students, understood it again? Yes, sir. Uh, animated story that was there, we could watch it very well. And I think it has helped us understand the story in a better way. Isn't it? Yes, yes sir. Yes, very sir. Good. Very good. So, you know, how can we also change the people? It is very first, uh, you know, simple. Just not to help unnecessarily and making them lazy but you better ask them to do something and then they can be paid when a person realizes that one can be paid for doing nothing you know they become lazy and they never want to work but here the person you know pay him gave him money but also taught him a lesson that unless he works hard he won't be paid anymore in life and that lady you know who always, Olga, used to speak to him in a very harsh way, harshly, strictly, you know, even if she was working for him, but she also cried for him, and that helped him realize better way 
that he was really wrong you know and finally decided to be a good person and he became right anybody who wants to summarize the story can you summarize it anyone share the summary of the story may i say something dear student if you can't or if you don't want may i share again for your better understanding and revision yes sir okay very good be responsive hmm? thank you dear so this story the beggar is of a beggar named lashkov while begging he made an advocate sergey who gave him work so he asked him to cut wood at his house he asked the cook to show him the shed where wood was kept then the beggar was too weak you know because of drunkenness and no work at all and even was very much hungry he was under the influence of alcohol you know that he could barely stand on his feet still the cook olga told sergey that the wood had been chopped you know in such a condition no man could chop the wood instead of chopping the wood he could chop his own feet or some other thing nearby and so uh, that lady olga told sergey that he had chopped the wood instead he see herself had chopped the wood you know that ladder sergey was glad that the man worked and paid him 50 kopecks for chopping the wood you know here the currency used what do you think rupees this kopek from which country is it the currency russian pardon kancha russia ussr yes very good here shreya then what happened you know after he got the half of the uh, ruble in 50 kopecks like achana or half of the rupee that is 50 paise that ruble is almost equal to 1 rupee 90 uh, 0.95 of indian national currency imr 50 kopecks for the chopping the wood then he asked him to come on the first day of every month for it sometimes he asked him to shovel the snow or to set the wood in the shed or to dust the rugs and he would pay between 20 to 40 kopecks and once gave his whole trousers to him to and that way he used to call him every now and then whenever he was coming he used to give him 20 to 40 kopecks or half of the rupee and that way that beggar lashkov started earning money when sergey shifted his house he employed the beggar to help him in transporting the articles the beggar had changed as the as he was sober that day and sergey felt satisfied that his efforts had paid in reforming a drunkard as he could read and write sergey asked his name offered him better work and shook hands with him after that day lashkov the beggar was never seen and you know when he was transferred sergey was transferred you know the advocate he wanted somebody's help to see his articles and there was again lashkov who helped him and was also paid by sergey for that work and he also told him that if he continued that way working he would definitely earn money and as the beggar lashkov could read and write you know he was given one better opportunity at the recommendation by sergey and there he got another clean job that he could do then after two years you know sergey was buying the ticket outside the theater and spotted lashkov there lashkov was well dressed and was buying the ticket of the gallery area you know gallery area is specifically mentioned because it needs extra money you know that so sergey was glad to see him and called him lashkov was now working as a notary and earned 35 rupees a month he thanked sergey for helping him out of the pit for his kindness lashkov told sergey that it was not for him but for his cook olga that he was a changed man because of her she would scold him cry for him and chop the wood for him so her behavior transformed lashkov with this 
he went to the theater and you know that was the end there is a story do you remember the students that we have watched in both or uh, three videos that we have watched right firstly the summary and then the real story in an animated form any doubt dear students any question or can we discuss the question answers here there i am taking you down you can see on the screen you can also turn over the page and come on page number you can see the pictures given in your textbook that lady olga then lashko and also the they are okay and here they met at the theater and they told him the lashko told the lady about olga that how she could transform him that way you know lashko and sergey both of them sorry uh, sergey and olga both of them played a major role as there was a need of olga the same way there was a need of a person like sergey also one being kind and another strict you know your parents may also be playing that kind of role for you one of them must be strict with you and one very loving it's important so that we can you can share everything with one at the same time out of respect there should be a fear or a control by someone else one of your parents so here is the first question dear students on page number 67 as you can see has lashko become a beggar by circumstance or by choice what do you say it was by choice or by circumstance sir by circumstance no no you have understood it wrong by that it was really a circumstance that made him beggar no did something happen in his family that all of his parents died and so they had no way to help him because he was an alcoholic sir. yes because of his alcoholic nature and it is dear student not by circumstance it is by choice he was a beggar he preferred to be a beggar than being a part of choir in you know in a russian choir as he told the truth but later he preferred that he should tell that the lie to the people and make money being a beggar so he was not a beggar by circumstance but he was a beggar by choice dear students do you agree or if there is any confusion are you understanding by circumstance means yes, like in the in uh, like we have already studied the natural calamities uh, about prashant also and also the next about whom zain right so both of them were affected naturally so if they could have been beggar we could understand that they were beggars by circumstance but they were not they came over the circumstances but this fellow being good and being a part of russian choir because of his drunkenness he was kicked out of that choir group and finally he preferred to be a beggar so again you please understand this that lashko has become a beggar by choice not by circumstance understood and agree everyone or anybody wants to say something anyone understood agree yes sir okay good yes sir now the next question is what reason does he give to sagi for his telling lies yes we know that can you can anyone tell what sir what reason does he he mean lashko due to sagi for his telling lies so telling lies na that he is uh, he was a student and he was expelled the other time he used to tell that he was a english teacher and alcoholic nature yes sir so lashko told sagi that he was fired because he was a drunkard if he told the truth people would not give him arms means money and so he was forced to lie that was the reason for the excuse he gave yes dhansham you want to say something no sir i want to tell the same point which you told okay okay good now the next question so you can see is is lashko a willing worker why 
then does he agree to chop wood for sabhi what do you say first answer is nashkov a willing worker no no not at all he is no. not at all a willing worker if you ask then he, he could not have been a beggar he agreed to chop wood. yes but why then does he agree to chop wood for sabhi you know that he was caught red handed firstly saying that he was a student and was expelled from the school giving some excuses and some reason and the next day he was caught red handed again by sergi when he was telling him that he was a school teacher and uh, he lost his job and because of being caught and being trapped by in his own words he could not escape because he had on him that he would call the police and then you know what was going to happen so he preferred and he agreed to chop wood for sergi I will again repeat my answer. Lashkov was not willing to work because he was not paid, and he was hungry, felt cold, and was under the influence of alcohol. But he agreed to chop wood for Sabi because of his pride and shame. You know what was the pride and shame? You know he was trapped in his own words, right? Yes, dear students, understanding, getting it well. Yes, sir. Very good. And this is the fourth question here. You can see on page number sixty-eight. Sergey says, "I am happy that my words have taken effect." Why does he say so? Is he right in in saying this? What's your opinion, dear student? Yes, sir. Sergey says, "I am happy that my words have taken effect." when does he say so is he right in saying so so you know when why does he say so because he realized himself that it, it was his words that he should work and not just beg asking the people saying different names for money but rather he should work and earn money and that is the reason he said that he is very happy that his words have taken effect what effect they have taken that lesko firstly was a beggar and later started started working in a notary and was earning earning 35 rupees and is he right saying so yes he is right because if he had not offered him the work lesko would not have been earning money but all would have been just a beggar sitting in the streets and asking for money saying different different names and different different reasons and excuses Right, dear students. Do you agree? What I'm telling you, the answer. Yes, sir. Okay, good. Yes. You also please say something. Don't just listen and say yes, sir. Yes, sir. Sir, the answer. sir, the cook also helped him. Yes, yes. Absolutely. But if he had not taken, or if he had not offered Lashkov the job of shopping at his home, then. You know the cook was not supposed to go out and bring him there, na, and wait for him, wait for him and help. Firstly, it was Sergi who brought him home, and later we cannot ignore Olga, the cook, the way she has uh, she contributed, right, dear students? But firstly, the credit goes to Sergi, and of course, the major role that was played later by Olga, the cook. Right. Yes, okay. Now the next question, number five, is Lashkov is earning thirty-five rubles a month. How is he obliged to Sergei for this? You know, is there any obligation from Sergei's side? Uh, sorry, from Lashkov's side to Sergei because he was earning thirty-five rubles in a month? Do you agree, dear students? How it is? So simple. The same answer is there. That Sergey had noticed Lashkov that he was just begging, and he had been a part of his transformation from a drunken person to a good earner, almost thirty-five rubles. And this way, we can say, dear students, and also it was Sergey who had recommended him, you know, for being eligible for that job. If you remember, he had given him a letter. To be handed over to the person to get a clean job, 
and that's how we had got so yes lasco is obliged to serve for this for this means for lasco is earning 35 rupees a month am i right dear student do you agree yes sir i repeat the answer again lasco is obliged to serve for earning 35 rupees a month as a notary when sergi noticed that lasco had given up to drinking he offered him a better job due to which lasco became a notary one day and this way we can say that lasco is obliged to sergi for earning 35 rupees a month and the last question here dear students you can see number 6 is during their conversation lasco reveals that sergi's cook olga is responsible for the positive change in him how has olga saved lasco you have got already the answer anybody would like to answer yes anyone it's very simple that olga hated the beggar she scolded him very much and also she felt pity for him and so he sorry she even chopped the wood for him and she used to cry saying you know his pathetic condition and all this you know had an effect on lasco and ultimately she could change him from a drunken person person to a good human being right do you agree or not dear students you are being so quiet and really you know not enjoying teaching you nowadays hello you are turning your cameras off that is okay but you are not saying unmuting yourself is there a, is there a, really a chaos outside everywhere with everyone that's why you have muted yourself and you are not saying anything or not understanding and so can't answer and so you have muted yourself what is the truth tomorrow onward i will not keep this option on that you will be able to send messages here in the chat box because you are just putting your answers there then there is no point on your student conducting this interactive sessions on google meet it can be simply a youtube session conducted hello anybody is there yes sir yes sir you please frankly tell me the reason are you not really enjoying the way we are conducting this session you are able sir, to watch the video understanding then why don't you speak nirmal you are there sometimes speaking but there are many students who used to be very interactive have stopped at all you know and they are just being quiet hello ah uh, yes any specific reason arya aryan so brilliant students you are and then also keeping quiet please share your experience so that we can make the necessary changes and you will be as frank and open to me as you were there earlier hello nishan hello madhura rajendini many of you so brilliant of you are there but eight saying nothing hello hello dear students am i audible Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Are there any, any specific reason here that you are not saying at all anything? I'm just speaking. I'm just telling the story. I'm just showing you the video. You are all there to watch. I'm the only telling you the answers. You simply say yes, no. Even you are not bothered to so tell me that if either you have understood or not. Hello. Am I audible, everyone? Are you are speaking and now yes, I'm not saying. Yes, sir. Only Rajendra is saying something now. Everybody is still, you know, just keeping muted themselves. They are there. This is really disappointing, dear students. You should be there interactive, not here. Now you please answer this last question. Talk about it. How can we help beggars or abolish begging? Sir, by offering jobs. good answer here yeah. arya you say something i would like everybody to say something a word at least 
Sir, some beggars and they lose their hope to live and to work because of their uh, bad condition. Very so we should you know, like Prashant did, if he had just made this arrangement for those people, they must have felt themselves that they were isolated and they were paid by the people. But when they themselves started working for others, they could enjoy their life and they became independent. So the similar way, or similarly we can say, the beggar should not just be provided everything for doing nothing, but they should be trained in such a way that they can make their money themselves, they can earn their money themselves, they can win their bread themselves and be independent. Right dear students, even nowadays there is a campaign, campaign going on, Atma Nirbha Bharat. So that's what, government cannot give the opportunity and the employment to everyone. It is never possible. These are the people who should do something for our nation and come up with some different ways of earning and being independent. Like, you know, the president of America, I think Roosevelt or some other, used to say, ask what government, don't ask what government can do for you. Tell us what we, or ask yourself what you can do for our government or the nation. No? So these are the things here. It has already exceeded two minutes, but yet I'm not getting satisfactorily uh, response from your side, dear students. At least you please say your name so that I can understand that you are there. Or just keeping aside mobile and clipping. Don't know. God knows what is going on. Are you please say your name? Are Khande? Are Nwakle? Are Nwakle? Not saying anything. Gayatri Korpe, say something dear. Your name at least. Or yes sir. Yes sir. sir. Okay, Gansham. Yes you are sir. there already, yes. Kushal More, say something dear. Yes, yes sir. sir. Yes okay, sir. Okay, good boy. Nirmal is there. Nishan. Sir, I am also there. Yes sir. <laughs> yes, you are there. Yes, yes. Nishan. Hello, Nishan. Yes sir. Yes sir. Okay, good boy. Palak. Okay, good. You are there. Palak, you are only there. Say your name loudly. Piyush. Yes, sir. Madhura. Hello, Madhura. How are you here? <laughs> See how they are being caught. That they are not yes, there. Sir. Oh, you are there. Very good. Rajnandini. Yes, sir. Saili. Yes, sir. Kardul. Yes, sir. Shreya. Patil. Yes, and sir. Shreya Shonone. Both of them are there. Surbi, you have been very much quiet here. Surbi, not even said a word. Vaishnavi Sharma. Varun Bura. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, good. So at any time I will name you and you have to say something. Huh? That's why we will make the session very interactive and we can enjoy our learning and teaching better way. Do you agree? Just one way. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Or one person yes, saying and you are just listening. Yes, it makes no sense. Okay, very good. So I'll just share with you the questions we have discussed and their answers also and the summary. Please, as and when possible, you write it in your notebook. Find your students. Yes, sir. Okay, sir. So that's it for today. Yes, Thank you so much, dear student. Take care. Yes, sir. Bye. Thank you, sir. Bye, sir. Bye, Thank sir. you, sir. Bye, sir. Thank you. Bye. Welcome. Bye, sir. Bye, sir. Bye, sir. Bye, dear students.